Hey guys, it's Darren and Bryce. We have another update. Check it out. For this Fusion 360 update, I'm going to start with one of my favorite usability enhancements. When I get a file from a teammate, I will usually hit the play button to see how they designed the part. But many of you out there know what happens when you accidentally hit that play button. You are along for the ride until the bar gets through the entire timeline. Well, not anymore. You can now hit the escape key to bail on the playback. But wait, there is more. Not only did we add the cancel to the timeline, but we added it to compute all, a parametric feature edit, a finish form, and a finish base feature. Yeah, check this out. I'm going to go back in time and edit this chamfer, and I'll hit OK. Recently, we have added the status bar for rebuilds, but I just realized I input the wrong chamfer distance. In the past, I would have had to wait for all the features to recalculate. But now I can hit the escape key again and Fusion 360 will cancel the rebuild operation. I can't tell you how many times I've had to wait idly by in other CAD applications waiting for it to calculate. Now in Fusion 360 we have a progress bar of the calculation and have the option to cancel the rebuild computation at any time. Now let's move on to our bodies folder. Last update we added the ability to group bodies into different folders. Unfortunately it threw the folder at the bottom of the list. For a long list of bodies like this, the group would have been off the screen. We listen to your feedback on the forums, and we improve this so that the bodies group folder appears at the top of the list. Now let's move on to some of the big enhancements to hit the sketch environment. First, we have updated the move tool to help edit spline points. At each endpoint and spline fit point, we get tangency handles that control the both the angle and magnitude of the tangency at that point. Whoa, that was a lot of jargon. What does it mean? It just means that we can now use the Move tool to edit how curved our splines are at that point. We can use the Move tool to manipulate the tangency handle, or we can use it to manipulate the point of the spline. Well, this technique works in 2D sketches, but you will see the real benefit in 3D sketches, which I'll show in a few seconds. But first, let's move on to some 3D sketches. We want to create a 3D curve to use as a rail for a surface loft. I'm going to start by creating a 2D sketch on the bottom face. Notice though, when I hover over this vertex, the spline doesn't seem to want to lock onto that vertex. So let's turn this into a 3D sketch by selecting the option out of the sketch palette. Now notice that when I hover over that vertex, we can lock onto it because we are in 3D sketch mode. I'm going to make this next point in space on purpose. Previously, if I wanted to make this already existing geometry coincident to that other vertex on the other surface, I had to do this crazy four-step workflow for each coincident. But now, I can simply select the two points and select coincident. Fusion 360 will automatically include the 3D geometry in our active sketch. But wait, there's more. Now I want to make the spline tangent to both edges. Previously, I would have had to use include 3D geometry command but now I can just select the edge and the spline and make them tangent together. That's too easy. Finally, we are back to the move command. Moving a tangency handle in 3D space by clicking and dragging is often difficult and makes the handle jump around sporadically. Simply click on any spline point to activate the tangency handle, then use the triad to manipulate the handle. The move tool enables us to manipulate the handle with the triad for higher levels of precision. So those were a few of the nuggets to hit the sketch workspace. Now let's switch over to drawings. First, we'll start by creating a section view. Notice we now get a list for all the bodies and components that the section view cuts in this view. Let's start by deselecting a few of the bodies that comprise of the motor. We can always edit the section view to select or deselect more bodies to include in the section cut. Now that I have this sweet section view on the drawing, I want to highlight a particular area in this view. Now in Fusion 360, we can chain views together. So I could take a section view of a projected view, then use a detail view of that section view. Of course, if anything updates in the design, all the views will automatically update when we use the get latest command. Next, let's move on to this note that's non-standard looking up in the top right. Let's edit the note by double clicking. Now we can control the justification of our text as well as create bulleted and numbered lists. Finally, we added multi-sheet drawings last month, but when the drawing was exported to PDF, each sheet was saved out as a different PDF. Well, we fixed that. 
Now when you export multi-sheet drawings, all the sheets will be saved into one PDF with multiple sheets. This month I'll be bringing you updates from all ends of the spectrum, starting with how you interact with offline mode, service notifications, and job status. So let's start there. For things like uploads and cloud simulation runs, all I need to do is select this icon. When I do, I'll be taken to the familiar job status dialog where I can see my uploads are chugging along. While we're here, let's note some new file types you can import. Not too long ago, we gained the ability to convert those 1, 2, 3D designs, but new to this release is the ability to convert those SOLIDWORKS 2017 files. Great to know you can work alongside another powerful design tool with these. In addition, we've improved the way in which you switch from online to offline. The new toggle gives you simple feedback in both text and color. As I toggle it again to go back online, I'd like to also note the warning below. As you can see, it's a yellow warning and there's a note of some service degradation. Not a full stop, but some latency. A red dot would indicate a full interruption and put Fusion 360 into offline mode. When the issue has been resolved, Fusion 360 will automatically reconnect. Enough about that though, let's see what's new in section analysis. Previously, when using a section view, each component would take on the color assigned to the component. But sometimes you just want a single defined color. In this update, you'll now be able to override that and assign whatever color you want. I'll go with Bumblebee Yellow in this case. But we'll cancel that because it's time to go make a rendering. I'll turn on this decal so the touchscreen controls will be visible, then jump into the rendering workspace. Without much more than rotating the view and altering the environment, I'm ready to start making renderings. As I go to select where to render this, I used to have to consider the nuanced or sometimes blaring differences we would experience when using local versus cloud rendering. Luckily, that'll no longer be a problem because both use a unified rendering engine. Great news and something I'm sure a lot of folks out there will be thrilled to see implemented. As we open this file in the web, you'll notice another improvement. The decal we added before is visible in the web viewer. And this will be consistent whether you're in Fusion Team or sending someone a share link. Another welcome change. Before I wrap up, I have one quick simulation update to report. The adaptive mesh refinement dialog has been altered to make it more intuitive. We got rid of the checkbox and labeled the slider to make it more clear as to what settings you're applying. Great stuff. Wow, those renderings look great in the web viewer. By the way, my name is Lars and I'm here to show you what's new with CAM. I know that I'm not the only one who was excited when the CAM development team added 5 access to Fusion 360. You know, adding a couple of more axes to your CNC machine does make things a little bit more complicated. However, the toolpath selection within Fusion could not be much easier. Take for example a swarf cut. With the selection mode set to faces, I just have to select the angular face, hit OK and we can start that spindle. But what if you want to choose more than one surface in one operation? Well, in this update, you can do just that, making it easier and create fewer operations. Next, have you ever had a customer ask if you can machine a mesh file like STL or OBJ? Well, now you can stop shaking your head. In this update, you can throw all your favorite 3D toolpath at the mesh, finally letting me get working on this Batman model. Thanks to Mustang Dave for sharing this. A quick tip, you can go right into the cam space and start machining your file. Just make sure you select the mesh as your model when doing your setup. Also, if you want to modify the file in the mesh workspace, you will get a warning if you have not turned the preview on. It is easy to do. Just click your name, select preferences and in the preview section check mesh workspace. Now you can not only machine your mesh file, but also delete, reduce, and smooth that model. Let's dial back to two and a half axis. Here's something I think will make your day. Let me go and select a drilling operation, and I'm going to make sure that I check select same diameter. Now I only have to select one hole and let Fusion find the rest. In the past, our drill preview was blocked by the solid model. Now we can see the preview right through the model and give us a much better visual feedback. See how the recess on the top and the bottom of this hole is making our drill start and not penetrating the bottom? 
This reminds me of a tip John Saunders from NYC CNC shared the other day. Check auto merge whole segments. Our three different diameters are now merged, and if I want to secure that the drill tip goes past the bottom, I can do that on the heights tab. Drill preview through the solid? That is going to be helpful. Next is a good example of a user making a good point. Sometimes when in the cam environment, you want to access your origin folder, to maybe turn on or off a work plane. In the past, you had to switch back and forward between modeling and cam. Now it's right there, right within the cam workspace. One of my favorite things about integrated CAD and CAM is that when your geometry changes, you just have to update your toolpath. In the past, you had to go through and regenerate each setup. Now with this update, you can right-click the root setup folder and generate, simulate, post the code and generate setup sheets for all the toolpath in each setup all at once. I know how you love having the 500 pound back master or MSC catalog and a dozen tool literature taking up space on your desk. However, this next update might save a tree or save you from those scary paper cuts. When editing a tool, there's now a product link at the lower left. You can now paste the specific vendor's link and right from the tool library, you can go out and reorder your tools. I bet this should save some time down the road. Last cam update in this round should make many cam people happy. In this update, the cam developers did their thing and added the 3D Morph toolpath. Not much to say about this other than this toolpath is absolutely perfect for machining with a constant cutting direction between two contours. This should make things smooth. Now, I think that was a pretty good list of cam updates. Now back to Bryce and Aaron. Wow, there's a ton of enhancements all across Fusion 360, but I've got to say my favorite has to be the kill switch. The escape key when you accidentally hit OK and it's computing forever, you can hit escape and cancel that. That's awesome. So cool. As well as so many enhancements coming to the sketch environment. Yeah, and uh, make sure to check the blog. We're going to link it in the description because there's some stuff in limited preview that we're working feverishly to get released to the wider audience, but we want to make sure to vet it first. So. Also, we just updated our roadmap. Take that. It's a great read. It tells you what's coming to Fusion 360 over the next year. Really cool stuff. Great work, Kaching. Uh, thanks for watching, everyone. Have a great month.